next gentleman, you know him from Comedy Central's Black Jesus, the Smoke Yours crew. Y'all show some love for my guy, Sleek Johnson! Come on, give me some more of that shit, man. Keep that noise going. Yeah, I feel great. Y'all got to give it up for this nice. Y'all like this outfit? Give it up for that. <laughs> motherfucker came with an eviction notice. <laughs> My girl was mad as a motherfucker, but guess what? I look good as fuck putting that couch on that U-Haul. Nigga out there styling and shit like, bitch, I can't even hold it. Bitch, you better get that motherfucker. I'm gonna fuck my jacket up. <laughs> What's up, Keep Your Distance? My name is Slink Johnson. Some of y'all might know me from a uh, show on Adult Swim called Black Jesus is Adult Swim. <laughs> Give it up if you're sanctified. <laughs> and it's, like, it's nice to see that everybody in here know a nigga, but you know what that mean, right? You ain't seen Black Jesus on TV in a while, huh? Yeah, that mean a nigga out here broke and famous. And that's a bullshit combination, being broke and famous. I still like doing the same shit everybody else do. I take my kids to school. I go to Starbucks. I go pay my bills. I go shoplifting. <laughs> Come on, everybody in here still, still. Don't act like you don't. You know, and it's kind of hard. People be noticing me at all the wrong times and shit. Like, people come up to you. It's nice to be adored and admired, but I don't want to sign your autograph while I'm in the county building. <laughs> I'm just trying to get my EBT right, not catch you and keep your distance. People are so inconsiderate, man. You know, and I still get my shoplift on. Just the other day, it was about 87 degrees in LA, and I had a full leather jacket on and food for less. Hey, <laughs> man, I was getting money, and I had a bounty of ill-gotten merchandise. And while most of y'all might be nervous when you get to the door after you be still and you see the little, the little beep beeps right there, <laughs> not me. Thank God I'm vertically inclined, so I put all that stolen shit up by my shoulders. <laughs> Nigga walk out right past that motherfucker. You know? <laughs> Nigga be looking like Lawrence Taylor around the shoulders and shit. Man, but last time, though, no, I made it out there food for less with a whole bunch of shit. I was feeling good. My family was going to eat good that night. I had a box of Zatarains, a, a carton of eggs, a loaf of bread. I ain't even smashed that motherfucker. I was winning. I make it out the door with all that stolen shit, feeling like I'm just for this. I'm scot-free. But as soon as I'm getting close to my car, I feel a tap on my shoulder. Oh, my God. All I thought was loss prevention. So when this nigga tapped me on my show, the only thing I saw was the headline from TMZ saying, Black Jesus cracked in food for less, still in shrimp. <laughs> the Lord is broke, y'all. <laughs> I turned around to see who this was tapping me on my shoulder, and it's a little Mexican kid with glasses on. He just adored me, and he said, Lamar, Lamar. <laughs> what are you doing in food for less, Lamar? I said, nigga, I'm trying to feed my family, and you fucking up my dinner, nigga. Catch me a key rock, KYD. I don't be wanting to talk to them niggas at the wrong time. Fuck them people. What a par I see this is a young millennial crowd, so this might not be the one for y'all, but you know what a parent said. Parents make some noise. See, I can tell by that reluctant ass applause, y'all didn't really mean to do that shit. You niggas, you, you're lying. You're lying. Nobody has sex with the idea like, yes, I'm going to create a lifetime of love with this woman. No, you went to go get a nut. An earthquake recently said, and I don't mind saying it too, man, fuck them kids, man. I know y'all try to be politically correct. You on Facebook and shit because your job watching. You want to put the little ugly motherfucker on your post. <laughs> oh, little Billy made the honor roll. 
but that nigga nine years old and ain't potty trained. Bitch, your priorities is fucked up. <laughs> kids come out and change the trajectory of your whole life. Think about it, Kev. Before kids, I know I was out here living. Nigga, hairline came down his eyebrows. <laughs> Nigga has six pack nests and shit. T shirt fitting tight around the nigga arm. I'm selling dope, driving the cutlass. I'm at the prime of my life. I didn't want nothing else. Then all of a sudden, God gonna come bless me. August 30th, 1995, gave me an eight pound, nine ounce boy. And I looked at God and said, Nigga, I ain't even want the eight pounds. I just wanted nine ounces, nigga and a trip to St. Louis. <laughs> you gotta keep it real with your kids. That's what's wrong with the world today. These kids is fucked up because we ain't keeping it real with them. You know what I'm talking about? I, 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 hey, I'm a strong proponent of keeping it real. I tell my son all the time, nigga, if it wasn't for the fact that your mom was making meatloaf that night, you wouldn't even be alive, nigga. <laughs> I had a brand new 90, Madden 95 and a sack of weed. I was on my way to the house, nigga. <laughs> think about it, man. Y'all kids weren't born out of love. Everybody in here, I think 90% of us was born in sin. You know, all of us wasn't love, baby. Some of us was $40 babies, <laughs> light bill babies. I know for a fact that I came about from a pool, from a dice game. My pops was passing sevens and elevens all night on Willie and Earl, tearing their ass up, and my mom was in the corner of the bar looking at him like, ooh, that's that nigga. <laughs> Whoever was hitting that night would have been my daddy. <laughs> they make the best out of what they got, though, you know what I mean? Fuck these kids, though. They come out, they don't respect you and shit. You know what I'm saying? You try to teach them love, and it's fucked up. This, we live in such a fucking, uh, uh, what's the word? A fucking, uh, this world is just all about material shit, man. That's what the fuck. You, I'm high, Kev. Come on, man. <laughs> we living in a materially driven world, and these kids don't respect shit, man. When you broke, don't nobody respect no broke ass man. Your mama, your baby mama, your other baby mama. Not even your motherfucking kids. True story, man, I'm driving down the street with my beautiful two-year-old daughter in the back seat, and she just as cute as a button. <laughs> we driving in South Central, we passing that McDonald's right there on Manchester and Normandy. Make it up, make some noise if you know where that is. <laughs> we passing that McDonald's on Manchester and Normandy, and I swear my baby got caught up in that golden arch. I, that, the motherfuckers light hit her like a pristine ray of hope. I, <laughs> Look, my baby looked just like one of them refugees on the National Geographic movies. You know, when ice come break in and save them from the bad people, they get caught in the flashlight. <laughs> she said, Daddy, Daddy, I want McDonald's, Daddy, McDonald's. And her little cute angelic voice just was heart wrenching. It just fucked me up and I felt horrible because as a man, we have an innate desire to protect and provide for our people and I couldn't do shit for my child. I felt so horrible. It pained me to look in the rear view mirror at my baby and I said, baby, daddy ain't got no money. We gonna eat when we get home. <laughs> you know this little heifer sat straight up in her car seat and said, you's about a broke ass nigga. <laughs> I said, bitch, where you get that from? She said, my mama. <laughs> and speaking of her old janky ass, <laughs> this bitch, everybody else happy about the pandemic and, and the quarantine and getting to stay at home. She mad. She running around the house moping. You know why she was mad that she couldn't go to work, right? You know why? Because she missed her work husband. Yeah, and I know some of you guys, this is a foreign words. You, you never heard those words in your house, but I'm going to tell you what a work husband is, dog. A work husband is a dirty, low-life motherfucker. 
Look, man, this nigga get to look at your woman in all her beauty, glory, and magnificence for eight hours a day. For eight hours a day, she up there all day playing like victim, playing nice, telling him how bad I'm doing her. <laughs> oh, he just won't get a job. <laughs> Bitch, you know Hollywood clothes. Ain't nobody casting shit. <laughs> up there all day playing nice, Kev getting free lunches and iPads and gift certificates and shit. Bitch came home with a Gucci purse talking about they giving them away at my job. No, nah, bitch, they giving them to you. <laughs> she up there all day like she just Princess fucking Diana. But as soon as she come home, as soon as she come home, what do I get? First thing the bitch do, she come in, slam the motherfucking door open and shit. <laughs> Snatch that ponytail off and throw it on the floor. Then take that big ass bra off and them titties come flopping down like the oxygen mask on the airplane. <laughs> Running around the house with them motherfucking sweats with pink on the booty. Look, bitch, I'm tired of them sweats. <laughs> I bought her them sweats when we went to go see Jason's lyric. Bitch, get some more. <laughs> tired of that shit. I seen the light. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna end it on this, cause I got a lot of angst when it comes to my baby mama, but I'm gonna say this, I understand. I do. I'm gonna say this though, cause I got 10 women in my life that I love. I got a mama, three sisters, three baby mamas, and three daughters, and I love them all to death. And I say this, I understand that black women are the most unprotected people on earth, and that shit gotta stop, you feel me? And as a real man, as your brother, as a real crip out here, I'm a real nigga, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> don't, get, don't get the fine threads twisted. I'm a, I'm a real nigga out here. <laughs> now, as your brother, as a real nigga, I vow to you, baby, I don't care if any nigga fuck with you and make you feel like anything less than a princess you are. I don't give a fuck who it is. Mrs. On Stage, I don't give a fuck if it's Kev. You feel me? I don't give a fuck if this nigga fuck with you. I don't give a fuck if this nigga fuck with you. You hear me? I hope you bitches know how to fight, because you probably was talking shit to the nigga in the first place. <laughs> hey, look, I'm Slink Johnson, man. You better watch these niggas, because they got mean left hooks. <laughs>